Okay, our 2013 NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race winner for the second consecutive year and the fourth time in his career, which is a record in NASCAR, four NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race wins and 12 starts, Jimmy Johnson. He drives the number 48 Lowe's Patriotic Chevrolet. For Hendrick Motorsports, he's joined by his crew chief, Chad Knauss. Congratulations uh, to both of you. And uh, Jimmy becomes only the second driver to win consecutive all-star races, joining the late Davy Allison, who did it from 91 to 92. Jimmy, congratulations uh, on the win. And um, you got out that last segment, and it was... It was off to the races, but congratulations, and how's it feel to win yet another all-star race? It, it, it's incredible, um, especially in the, the way we had to go about it tonight. It didn't do us any favors qualifying yesterday, and with this average that we had through the first four segments, I was really fearful I wouldn't have a shot at a front row start or a second row start, and I felt like the winner would, would come from one of those two rows. You know, not to stick the obvious, but that's you know, really the goal from all of us is to try to be on that front row for the final restart. And uh, through you know a lot of uh, aggressive driving, um, a great handling race car, you know, a lot of different things, Chad's uh, strategy at different times to, uh, to to have us on better tires than some cars that were around us. Guys, any we were able to keep Chad? clicking away at good finishes through the second, third, and fourth segment. And, and that got us to fourth. And then pit road uh, came around, and, and our guys... You know, had an awesome pit stop, and we almost got off pit road first, but we're, we're on the front row, and the front row is what we needed. You know, and for 10 laps, uh, Casey and I uh, you know, pretty much ran wide open around here for two or three laps side by side, and I was finally able to edge by him and, and have the track to myself and, and put some distance on him. Jack, and now uh, that last pit stop there, that mandatory four-tire, uh, really the 48 team really showed, showed its uh, stuff there. And... Uh, just talk about, certainly it's, uh, it's an entire weekend, it's an entire process with the team and so forth. But certainly the driver, uh, outstanding. But what a job by the, on pit road there that last time. Yeah, absolutely. I was very proud of those guys. We, uh, we, we knew what we needed to do on the racetrack to try to get ourselves in good, good position. We felt like that uh, if we could come down in the top five, and tried to get a solid pit stop and maintain that, that we would be solid. We were kind of our train of thought from last night. I really didn't think that we'd be able to come down pit road and have a stop that fast. And, man, those guys just absolutely nailed it. And um, my hat's off to them. They've been working really, really hard trying to improve. And uh, we've had to switch some things around over the course of the last month or so. And uh, the guys really rose to the occasion. And I, I'm very, very proud of the effort from everybody at Hendrick Motorsports and everybody with the 48 team and, and what they've been able to accomplish over the course of the last few weeks to, to improve our pit stops. Questions now for Jimmy or Chad. Raise your hand. We'll get you a wireless. Any questions downstairs? I know we have a couple upstairs. Let's take Mike here, and then we'll go to the press box after this one. Go ahead, Mike. <clears throat> Mike Neff from Stretch.com. Uh, one for each of you. Jimmy, you dominated here for a while and then kind of fell off a little bit, and now you obviously seem like you're coming back. Did you lose a feel with the, the car of tomorrow that you're now getting back with this newer car, or is it just was it a, an overall process? And for Chad, you, you mentioned the changes you've made. You had some guys you've lost off the pit box to start the year, and you've made some changes in the pit crew. Um, how do you manage to keep the chemistry going when you, when you have that much mix-up on the team? Jimmy, you know, on, on the track, for me, I really think it has to do with the new surface. When the track was rough and tire wear was really high, there's just something that, that worked at this track for myself and for Chad. You know, it really takes a combination of car and driver to, to match up. And, you know, rough tracks, tracks that have a, a high uh, wear rate on the tire, we both shine at, at those venues. And this track was that. And as soon as they resurfaced it and put down this new blacktop that you can't ever wear out, uh, wear a tire out with, we, we were kind of more equal with guys and maybe a top five car, top three car instead of just being a dominant car. So, you know, the track is aging some, but it's still not a high wear track. Um, but we're, we're, we're working hard to, to be back on top of things. There's nothing better than winning here at home. And, uh, you know, we'll, 
like I said, I think we're, you know, one of three or one of five that, that can really make something happen here at this track where before uh, we, we seem to have a pretty good advantage. As, as far as the picker goes, it's a, it's a really difficult thing to manage as, um, as a team and especially as an organization. It's, it's hard because a lot of the players, much like you see in any type of professional sport, uh, they, they get locked up. Uh, you know, a lot of the players get locked up under contracts and, and held for long periods of time. And a, a step that Hendrick Motorsports made a couple of years ago was to begin to recruit people straight out of college. And uh, we would have combines, and we would pick a handful of guys or, or gals, and we would run them through the, the paces, and then we would dwindle them down to just a small few, and we would work with those people. And uh, we've been fortunate. It's been a long process, and it's taken us quite some time. Uh, we've been fortunate over the course of the last few years to start to develop and get that fruit from what we started four years ago. Um, a lot of the individuals that we brought in didn't know anything about motorsports, but they were fantastic athletes. And now these athletes are starting to understand racing and understand the pressures that are involved to pit a race car for a, a guy like Jimmy Johnson. It's tough, and uh, especially when you have cameras all on your grill and you know watching every move, and as soon as you make a mistake, you get blasted in the media and the paper and everything else. So these guys are starting to become numb to that type of pressure. Um, we're fortunate to have a little bit of depth, and uh, we've made three changes this year. And I'm not saying that we're perfect by any stretch because we had a couple mistakes tonight on pit road, but it just so happened that they nailed it on the last one. And hopefully that's a good sign of things to come. We'll go to Jenna, and then we'll go to the press box. Go ahead. Jennifer, AP, I know you guys um, love this place and love winning here, and it's a sense of pride. And I, I hadn't realized that you hadn't won a points race here since 09 and a 600 since 05. So... Um, I, it, the way that you guys do love this place, were you circling it any more so than ever? Are you striving to, to reclaim that magic of we own this place and, and we're going to get back to that streak that we had, you know, five, six, seven years ago? Yeah, we, we definitely want to. And I think maybe 09 or something in there is when, when the repave happened. You know, that's really been, been a part of it. I, we've had decent finishes, good finishes. We've been competitive and led laps. But... You know the track's just so different now than, than it was then, and uh, and we we had it scienced out. We knew literally at what time in the afternoon what the adjustment needed to be made to the car, and it was like clockwork. Didn't matter the year, just don't 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 every single time. Well, it's not that way anymore, and we certainly want to have that magic because winning here in Hendrick's backyard and Lowe's corporate office is just up the road. There's a lot of reasons we want to be good here. Um, but more importantly, it's like we know that we've had it, so we, we feel like we can find it again, and, and we're knocking on the door. But it, like I was saying earlier, it, we're one of three or one of five that can make something happen here now, where before it was, you know, we, we had a pretty good advantage. Who are the others? Five. Five's won a bunch. 18. I think 18, 20. Um, 99 should be. 99. I thought the 99 tonight had, had things under control with his qualifying effort and starting up front. Um, you know, the 78, I think, somebody to consider for the 600. I think he, he probably was the most dominant car tonight. But <laughs> in general, it, I always think of Kyle here. Uh, Denny has had some good runs, but yeah. the five would, would probably be my, the guy I'm worried about the most here come race time. Go to the press box for a couple, and we'll come back downstairs. Go ahead, press box. Chad, this is Thomas Pope from the Fable Observer. Do you talk to crew guys before a stop to sort of pump them up, or, hmm. or by the time it gets this late in the night, do you take a step back and say, you know, this shouldn't be a time when I really need to say anything. If they don't know it, uh, it's not going to do any good to tell them now. Man, I wish I knew what to say sometimes. Uh, sometimes not saying anything is the best thing to say at all. Uh, it's, it's really tough, and sometimes we, we do get together and try to talk about things. But quite honestly, when, when you're in the midst of a race, it's very difficult to get out there, corral those guys, and try to have any type of really fruitful conversation because no matter what you do to speak to them, you're yelling, right, because it's loud at the racetrack, and it, it just doesn't come across right, whether you're trying to be supportive or not. So we, we discuss what we want to do before the race begins, and uh, then throughout the course of the race, there's a little bit of radio chatter. But, man, we just let those guys do their thing. There's some guys that don't want to be spoken to. There's other guys that want to be hit on the helmet to get excited. There's Everybody's got a different thing that, that stimulates them to where they can go over the wall and do what it is that they need to do. Uh, so I just kind of let them do their thing, and, and I focus on what I need to do, and then we 
review post race and, and figure out what we need to do for the next week. Go ahead, press box. Uh, Jeff Owen, Sporting News. Jimmy, um, you broke another record tonight, uh, passing Gordon and Earnhardt with uh, four wins in this race. Thank and you. you passed Jeff a few years ago uh, with the fifth championship. Where do you think you stand now in history compared to those two guys? That, that's a, a tough question, honestly. And truthfully, I don't think it's a a question that I I'm the answer. You know, it, it's. Uh, I still have a lot of years left in my career, and, and that's something that you know, the public, the mass, that's what other people come up with. I, I don't think it's right for me to sit here and say, hey, I'm, I'm this guy, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy, or anything in between. So um, very proud of what I've accomplished, but I, I still feel like there's a, a lot more left that I can do in this, in this sport and work hard to do that. And um, when I'm old and sitting in a rocking chair, hopefully people think highly of what I've done and, and you know, give me a tip of the hat. Back downstairs, Bob, did you have a question? Bob, and then uh, Al and David, and then over to Nate. Uh, Bob Hocker, Sporting News. Uh, Jimmy, most of the guys we talked to on pit road afterwards said they knew that if they weren't in the top two coming off of pit road that the race was over for them. I mean, did you have that same sense that, you know, that you were, that if you could get a good restart that nobody was going to pass anybody? Yeah, and that's... That's the way it is on these fast tracks anytime. I mean, you, if you look at any mile and a half, two mile track, um, you know, the first couple laps when everybody's on stickers, you're, you're going to have that. And in this format, I think kind of lent, headed that direction some too because you were required to come down and put four tires on. So the front row was going to have an advantage. But we've seen that here for a long time. And when we look back to last year and the strategy we used, uh, we knew that we needed to win the first segment, which would put us up front on the start for the, the final segment. And we were able to take advantage of that. So um, we, we all knew it going into it. And that's why I didn't have, that's why I was really, I don't want to count say that I counted myself out, but starting 20th or 23rd, whatever we were, and that wasn't good. And that, that way this average worked out, I, I knew I wouldn't have a shot at the front row unless I made something really happen in the first segment. And I had trouble early in the first segment. Brad had an issue in front of us, and it was tough to get by guys. But second and third, fourth segment, we were able to make some stuff happen and put us in position for a good pit stop. Let's go over here to uh, Al Pierce and then to uh, David Caravello and then to Nate. Yeah, for either one of you guys, Al Pierce and Auto Week, y'all have won this thing under four different formats. Are, are y'all to the point now where you're thinking there's nothing they can do, there's no format, there's no rules, there's no gimmickry they can do that we can't figure out? Have y'all reached that point yet? No, I, we just get lucky, man. That's what people say. So there's no talent involved. We just got lucky tonight. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, go to David. <laughs> David Carville, NASCAR.com. Uh, Chad, we hear so much. You guys talk all the time about learning from this race for the next race. I mean, I mean, can we look at you guys tonight and say, okay, the car was this good tonight. It should be this good next week. I mean, how does this translate given that this race is so much shorter than what we're going to see next Sunday? That's, that's really a good question. It's, it's a lot different. Uh, when you're trying to set up a car for a 20-lap run, when you know it's, it's – I don't want to – it's, it's like other professional sports this race is, right? You know when the cautions are coming. You know when the brakes are going to happen. You know the format. You can kind of sit back and kind of strategize and understand what's going to happen. In a normal race, we have no idea what's going to happen. We don't know when the quarters are going to come. We don't know when the thirds are going to come. We don't have a two-minute warning. So having a fast car, clearly, and having fast pit stops makes a huge difference. So if we can take and translate what we had in this race car this evening and, and bring that next week, I think we'll have a good shot at it. But the setups are completely different because you can't, you can go 50, between 50 and 56 laps on a fuel run, let's say. Well, tonight we only went 20 laps, right? You may have had a break, but you knew when that break was coming. So if you got yourself into a position where you were running hard and you were leading or running third, you could pull back, save your tires a little bit. Next Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday night, excuse me, you can't do that. You're going to have to run hard the whole time. So it's a completely different setup. Got one more question. Nate Ryan, and then two more. Jenna, finish it up. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day Sports. Uh, Jimmy, uh, early in the week, you said that this format had a potential to be able to follow the leader and that whoever got out front early in the last segment was going to um, 
be in the wind and, and pretty much win. So it, it pretty much played out the way you thought. Um, it, this is a tough question to ask for the guy who just won, but I'm sure they're probably going to be looking again at maybe a format change because they've only had one pass for the lead in the last five laps at this place, at this event, um, one time in the last eight races. Is, is there anything they can do or that you could see that, that may engender like you know more, for lack of a better word, excitement in the, in the last segment? When it's when it's ten laps, it's so tough at these speeds. Um, I, I really don't know what to do at that point. I felt like the four segments beforehand, there was a lot of coming and going. You guys on different strategies that uh, you know, made made for some exciting racing. Where I was all night long, I had to pass guys all night long, so it was really exciting for me for the first four segments. Um, you know, when you get to that last segment on a track like this, maybe if you weren't required to do four, but everybody's gonna. It's it's impossible because if it's a ten lap shootout and you're allowed to put two on, you're going to put two on. Why would you put four on? And everybody's going to do the same thing. I think you're pinned in on a mile and a half track with a ten lap shootout. Um, your, your options are limited to create you know the multiple passes for the win. I think there's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I think that uh, coming here, we're allowed to have eleven sets of tires. I think that the amount of tires that we get, half of them should be super softs, and the other half should be normal. And that gives you an opportunity to try to do your tire strategy. Once you have super softs, you know they're only going to last 20 laps as opposed to the set that's going to last 60 laps like we're going to run here on our typical weekend. You can strategize, use that. When those tires fall off, that's when you're going to start to see some passing. And in a 20-lap or a 10-lap segment, I think it could be very exciting to see who plays this tire strategy. Do you think that's something they could. It's not going to be easy, but they could. And I, I don't foresee it because Goodyear's in a tough spot, man. You know, they got to build a tire that's going to last. I'm just saying it would make it exciting because the only way that you're going to get passing is to have tire fall off, like we have in Atlanta, uh, like we have maybe in Texas, I think, when the tires start to fall off. That's the only time that you're going to get it. Final question. Jennifer, AP. Jimmy, uh, probably unbeknownst to you, but the graphic going into the last pit stop that TV showed was wrong. And it said that you should have gone in on a pit road like 11th or something like that. So naturally, there's a raging controversy that you cheated and you know didn't. Of course, and yeah. I'm lucky. And awesome. <laughs> that you you know you, NASCAR gave this to you. You didn't yeah. you didn't enter pit road where you're supposed to. Why does that happen to you? Do you think not the part where the graphic was wrong, but that people just you know every they they pick apart everything and they just don't think you come by it honestly. Just so you know, we had to figure it out well before NASCAR did, where we were supposed to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't have the slightest clue. Were we right? I mean, we were right. We're you were right. People, finally. yeah. <laughs> people, uh, <laughs> you know, if they're not, they're, people just want to hate. It's it's fine. I mean, I'm it's fine. I'm just lucky. And, and NASCAR rigs the races and um, whatever they want to believe. I'm, I'm going home with a cool trophy and a big check, and we 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 all <laughs> really know what happened. So, whatever.